So yeah, I'm kind of uh, on a Metroid kick right now, so I want to do a thing. And as a quick disclaimer, this is my opinion. If you don't like it, that's fine. Let's talk about it. Let's fight about it. I don't care. I'm ranking them based off of these three things. If the player progression is good, if the atmosphere is great, and my overall enjoyment. So yeah, let's get started in release order. So yeah, Metroid from way back in 86. Honestly, this is a C tier. Sure, it's the one that started it all and it lays out the groundwork of the gameplay and the atmosphere for the future series to follow, but one thing can't be ignored. It's fucking old and the gameplay kind of stinky. It's not the world's worst thing and yeah, you can look up guides and shit, but it's just a C tier. Metroid 2. This one goes right to C tier. It expands on the gameplay from the previous entry and artistically has improved. And it's also the jumping off point for the story, but it's held back by the hardware more so than the previous game. This game is just very linear, which isn't bad. It's just not my thing, especially with how repetitive it was going through and just killing Metroids. Super Metroid. It's our first S tier. It's got a reputation of lightning in a bottle for a reason. It inspired a generation of several metroidvania and it's considered a perfect metroidvania i have my own gripes with it but it does belong in the s tier metroid fusion so this one goes right to a tier it's an awesome game and it's personally better in short bursts in my opinion it's just a bit more linear than what i like which again is not my thing not a point against it the art direction has never been stronger and it plays way tighter than super metroid and it leans more on that horror atmosphere especially when it comes to the sax which is still probably one of the most frightening villains in metroid history so metroid prime if you know me i probably have a bias but that's okay this one goes right to s you see, I still think that this one has the richest atmosphere in the series. It quite literally does everything right except for the stupid fucking artifact hunt. But that's okay, that's okay. It's just a small little blemish. Metroid Zero Mission. This one also goes to A tier. It basically took what worked in Fusion and applied it to Metroid 1 in a very good remake. It does, however, lose a bit of that tense atmosphere from the original. While still being linear, it's not as linear as Fusion. Otherwise, it's a wonderful Metroid game. Metroid Prime 2. This one goes right to A tier. I actually think it's a pretty good sequel to Prime 1. I still prefer Prime 1, however. I appreciate that they try to experiment in this one. The ammo counters led to some intense gameplay moments, which I think they should have explored a lot more. And I also love the duality of the dark and light worlds. And also, Dark Samus is a top tier villain, you can't change my mind, even though it's kind of a retread of SAX. And multiplayer was a thing. Metroid Prime Pinball. This one goes to D tier. It's, it's literally a re, remake, re, it's a retelling, it, it's pinball but prime. But hey, it plays pretty good. I had fun. Metroid Prime Hunters. This one goes right to C tier. Honestly, dude, my hand hurts just thinking about this one. Hand cramps aside though, it is pretty good. It's just good old prime on the go. And Silex is pretty cool. Metroid Prime 3. This one goes right to B tier. This one feels like they wanted to do bigger and better things while streamlining the formula. And they mostly do a good job. It feels like Retro got a little too comfortable in their skin with this one. I don't know, I just can't explain it. I don't think it's as good as Prime 2 or 1. At least personally. Other M. Oh boy. Probably no shock here. It goes to D tier. And I'll be honest, this game does get a lot of hate, which can be blamed mostly on the localization. But honestly, playing it like an action game does help. It's just, it's just not a very good Metroid game. For you Halo players, it's sort of like how Halo 5 wasn't a very good Halo game. Federation Force. I'll be honest, this one kind of hurts me more so than Other M does. If you play the Prime series and you believe it's just a first person shooter, then you're kind of missing the point. And that's exactly what Federation Force does. You see, Prime is a translation of the Metroidvania genre to a first person with shooting elements. Yes, I know that sounds pretentious, but shut up. It's an adventure game above all else. So to basically make a co-op shooter is, once again, utterly missing the fucking point. Metroid Samus Returns. This one goes right to B tier. I actually did a review of this one back in the day, but I'll save you the trouble of watching that terrible video. It's a good remake, it is very safe, and it is bland at points. But overall, it's a damn good product, and it showed that Mercury Steam could make a Metroid game. It is a bit more linear than I like, but that's baked into the original, and changing that would piss people off, so, you know. Metroid Dread. 
the most recent release, it should be no surprise that I think this one goes to S tier. I think it's actually a great compromise between Super Metroid and Fusion. I wouldn't mind if the rest of the series would go like this from here on out. It's honestly one of the most engaging Metroidvanias I've played in quite some time. Something I didn't mention in the review, they really nailed Samus's character. Like, this is actually how I always pictured her personality being portrayed. So for that alone, I think it belongs in S tier. Thank you all again for watching. Uh, for those that are watching this in the future or in the past, I don't know how to rank AM2R. I still haven't played it. And that goes for Prime 4. I still haven't played it. And, and if at any point you disagree, let's fight about it in the comments or some shit. I don't know.